Well, I'd like to issue a warning before this video starts. YouTube is doing something sneaky with their ads lately. Um, basically, after reading a bunch of stuff here and there, if a video is longer than 10 minutes, they're trying to stick as many ads as they can in it. I'm trying to go through and make sure that that doesn't happen. There's settings I can check and whatnot, but even if I check it as no, don't do that, it, they're doing it anyway. You know what I'm saying? So please let me know if this video has more than one ad. It should be an ad at the beginning, and that is it. Um, I'm really not after ads in my video. I just did it because I thought, well, a little extra money towards buying equipment, you know, batteries, memory cards, whatever, would help a little. So I don't want you being bombarded with ads. This is what I'm going to be working on. Anyway, I got it hooked onto my tractor. But this is a plow for a customer. It's not mine. It's a 35 foot Richardson. You look at the tongue up here and look at the angle the plow is sitting at. The plow is going downhill and the tongue is going uphill. So, this is the problem. It has this pin, that's an inch and a half pin. Goes through some tubing, and the tubing is all pulled out. So I was originally just going to replace this tubing, but I got to thinking about it, and I decided I'm actually going to make ears like on this flat. Let's see, we're going to show you there, like these, this ear, and lay them in here. And I think that'll be a lot stronger. Um, ears hold better than tubing do when it comes to loads like this. But then I got to look it over, and in here, there are swivel eyes. Those swivel. If you notice, there's slop. That eye can slide sideways in there. There, there's a ring on that bolt, which means that eye has been sliding back and forth, back and forth up to that ring and it's kind of, it's worn the bolt down through there. So yeah, this moves all the time. See, there is a, there's a pivot point up here too. There's a pin through that so these can go like that. And there's a flex point right there and right there, which is in between this hitch mount. So that means this wing can follow the contour of the ground because there are pivot points up under here too. So that's why there's grease circs here because if this goes down, it's kind of like these two points come together. So that hitch kind of comes in and out. This stays parallel because it's attached to the plow here on both sides, so it can't angle like this. But this tongue effectively goes in and out like this, constantly. I didn't get any footage yesterday because I had my little ion camera set up on a small tripod and the wind blew it over and it scratched the crap out of the lens. Uh, didn't even have it on yet. It just happened immediately, right at the start. But I did get the hitch torn apart to this state and then we just got a torrential downpour, so I guess you could say yesterday was a wash. I went ahead and did this side off camera. I figured it'd be a little bit easier to film once I knew what I was doing. So I'll show you the making of the other mount. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go through with the porta band and cut these plates into length. And then we'll start building them out.
I was not paying attention to my puddle of steel I had going on the floor. I did forgot to put a plate down. Look at this. Look at the concrete right off of there, man. Took a big old chunk out of it. Son of a gun. Don't I feel like an idiot? I use the torch on all of this because this is doubled up here and the weld is in there and it's just a little bit past the capacity of my plasma cutter to get from here to here on that part. I On the other one I did I actually used the plasma cutter and it was a lot of work, a lot of time getting through there in this little corner right here. So torch, I think that looks pretty good but doesn't matter because I'm going to grind it all down because this has to be the exact right height to the other side so it just barely fits in that frame over there. So now, get to grind for a while. So the way I did this last time, I used my veneer calipers. We'll see. I got a little more gap on this side. I think that ear is bent. I might actually have a little more gap on this side than the other side. Well, it hits there. So, okay, same measurement then as the other side. So, I'll use my veneer calipers to measure in there. Then we'll transfer this over to the spring calipers. But kind of make sure we're close here. Yep, that's still set the same. And then we'll make sure nothing's hot. Oh my word. Oh, yeah. Oh, give me a heart attack. Duh. That's double stack. Oh, wow, look at it. Touches back there. Almost touches. So I'm a little low in the front. Around the other side here. Let's see where we're at. It's a little hard back here. So let's see, what can I grind her off? Yeah, it looks like I need to grind off this point right here, and then this point back here. So cross from each other, grind that down a little bit, and then it looks like it'll be perfect. Close. I don't think I want. Oh, 
which is how that around here while I'm holding anyway. I really don't think I want it any closer in there just because I don't want it to fit tight. So I think that's good. So I'm going to spot with that, make sure we're square that way though. Or not. still a little low, but anyway, well, I got it looser now, great, just touches, just touches, why people always ask but for some reason they do they always want to know what my settings are on the MIG welder um, I believe my wire feed is off and by saying off I mean incorrect I haven't timed it in a while but the last time I did it was off a fair amount so at 50 that should be 325 inches per minute and then I'm running about 24 volts and that is the weld it produced on this is three quarter inch metal. This is, what is that, uh, half inch metal here. And I did have a pretty good bevel. But as you can see, I mean, there's one little bead of splatter stuck right there. That is it. And I guess a couple over there. And that's, you know, freshly ground metal. So if it's going to have splatter, it's going to stick to that really quick. And I'm very happy with that weld. You can see the heat going through into this metal. You know, the temper line coming across there. I'm going to do at least three passes on these welds, but just thought I'd kind of show you what I've got going and blah, blah, blah. So, on with the welding. Well, after much grinding, and this has been a very grinding intensive project, but I got a piece that will fit there. This is new material. Uh, it's painted, but this is actually... Uh, incorrectly made from a welding shop not too far from me so I bought a whole bunch of that, that was dirt cheap um, they had it all welded together, anyway point being that is new material even though it's painted and uh, pretty well fits in there I have a nice gap that way I can fill that all in with weld and you know, it'll, go up, it'll go up over these beads here so that fits nicely and then this piece so champ for that edge clean this up a little bit and that'll fit nicely so this will tie these ears to here to this mount to this mount to this mount kind of hopefully pull it all through there this is the grand plan I just realized I forgot to test fit this whole piece and the thing that it goes in ah, crap <sighs> well anyway I'm gonna go ahead and spot in that piece back there and then we'll test fit it that's making me nervous. <laughs> 